Hi all, I'd like to show you another game from the now finished US Chess Championship. Alexander Lenderman was playing against Fabiano Caruana in round nine. Let's have a look at that game. It kicked off with C4, the English opening from Lenderman. And we have E6, which is asking sometimes to transpose into a Queen's Gambit declined if white played D4. But for the moment, white plays Knight C3 keeping it as a kind of English opening. But after d5, we do have d4. Um, we've transposed into basically a queen's gambit declined. Black now plays the trendy bishop e7. So this discourages uh, the bishop pin lines, you know, with knight f6, bishop g5. Asked white what he wants to do. And this is quite often uh, resulting in this position in white actually playing c takes d5. This is a very, very popular variation now. Bishop f4 coming here c6 we have e3 and now black plays bishop f5 carolina just develops his bishop not minding the b7 pawn here if queen b3 there's always queen b6 actually it's not a problem queen b3 but you have to be on the lookout when you do a move like this we have now an energetic move g4 which is actually very trendy in live book it is a pretty committal variation though, pawns do not go backwards. So even though it might be well trodden, it's quite committal in that white could end up with weaknesses later that he'll regret, uh, he or she will regret. So bishop drops back to e6 and then we have h4. It's a little bit double-edged basically, this, this idea. Uh, it's a, a very, very interesting position though, knight d7. We have g5, just gaining space. And now h6, this has all been seen before theoretically so far. g6, and usually here black plays knight to f6, allowing g takes f7, bishop takes f7, get a few games from there. But here, slightly unusual f5. It has some perks in that it reinforces the e4 square, it clamps down on white's e4, but this bishop is stuck behind these light square pawns here and white plays for a maneuver just to play for knight f4 which seems extremely logical on the surface at least bishop g3 just vacating f4 for a maneuver like knight h3 to f4 we have knight g f6 knight h3 now knight b6 Okay, on knight f4 now, you see knight b6 vacated d7 for knight f4 in, in preparation for that, for just bishop d7 here. Now white plays f3. And again, it looks a little bit as though this might be loose in the future, but white is concerned about black just playing the powerful knight e4 there, just hitting that bishop. So trying to secure that e4 square. So this f5 move earlier at move 10 was a bit of a novelty. Before the game, I think the psychology, Lendman really wanted to win this game and Caruana just wanted to play solidly. But it seems as though this is expressed on the chessboard, white having weaknesses basically, which can backfire potentially. Black castled now. I mean, this f5 is, is makes it slightly unique territory as well. You know, is it bad for this bishop or is it actually reaping dividends already? We have king f2 now, uh, rook c8 and black now. I mean, with the king on f2, it's not entirely secure. It looks as though if black can try and weaken this diagonal in particular with a c5 move, this could be very dangerous for the black king for the white king on f2 we have bishop d3 and now this just very logical looking c5 d5 is supported by both knights in any case here so the downside there is not so so great um <clears throat> and the the upside for this yeah this diagonal is just very sensitive white tries to get the king away from that diagonal but we have c takes d4 which loosens actually the f4 knight a little bit after e takes d4, this is the first target now, bishop d6. So black always now has the option of bishop takes f4, which would weaken actually this g6 pawn. It wouldn't be supported sometimes. Uh, so that's a nice option to have. We have queen b3. And actually, from a theoretical perspective, black's position, I've been you know checking this game earlier before 
showing you black's position here actually has a very good technical resource available which which seems to actually work uh fairly well in this position uh black actually played king h8 but there's a shocking technical resource which seems to actually work well which is actually knight e4 it shows actually that maybe although uh the f5 idea is working very well as a theoretical uh, opening novelty if this is really uh, working here uh, in this particular position if for example knight takes d5 i believe i checked how bishop a4 in in this line bishop a4 i don't think uh there's a killer check because the usual like killer pattern is it's just not available here uh, but uh, this kind of thing is just not working for white and if f takes f takes and we have pressure on f4 and d3 this position seems very very pleasant uh, for example here we just take here and you know if we if we reach a position like this then black is actually threatening rook takes c3 sometimes for bishop h3 you know for queen takes d5 this is this is a loose position for white it seems in all variations i've checked actually this knight e4 actually it does seem to work particularly well here but uh, even so in the continuation king h8 it's still knight e4 is on the cards and it seems because of that white is in grave difficulty here he does seem to have weaknesses around his king uh, and generally in the position bishop b5 and now Karana is willing to give up the dark square bishop with bishop takes f4 takes and the forcing move knight h5 uh, this is just a very very dangerous position for for white bishop e5 and it looks as though after bishop e5 isn't this just holding things together but now black has the option of weakening white on the light squares with this bishop takes b5 immediately weakening c4 and immediately knight c4 now if queen takes d5 there's knight e3 check here or if knight takes d5 queen takes d5 i believe looks possible because queen takes knight e3 check so this is a very nice aggressive move knight c4 white protects that sensitive e3 square but now knight takes e5 weakens f4 and also now means actually f6 is also weakened the queen can come to f6 hitting this g6 so black's king is feeling the pressure because a queen coming to g6 means potentially queen g3 of king f2 so the king sidesteps again but this is actually taken it doesn't matter that white has rook g1 here because now we have queen f6 hitting h4 white is really on the defensive he protects that pawn so Karana, as you can see from the captured pieces here is a pawn up <laughs> so yeah it's it's weaknesses plus a pawn up although it looks as though white's got his pieces around d5 if ever a knight takes there's things like rook c2 to consider uh, we have here knight f4 and now king e3 was played it looks pretty awkward stuff knight g6 and yeah this this is pretty horrible this looks absolutely horrible now uh white actually played rook takes d5 knight takes h4 opens up the g5 square for the queen after rook d7 queen g5 check and we have actually a little bit of a king chase here on the cards after knight takes f3 black is threatening now queen d2 which is checkmate that's parried with rook d1 now we have queen g2 this is just a very very dangerous position rook takes b7 is played here now rook fe8 if black gets another move 
well there's there's, there's multiple uh, frets in this position but f4 with the idea of rook e3 is one idea also this rook's a bit loose on b7 so it looks it looks out of the question to consider taking on f5 uh, we have a tactical move rook c7 trying to deflect the rook away from e8 and that piece is no longer loose but rook b8 yeah queen c6 now not bothering actually with the b2 pawn well it can't anyway i mean not with the rook because the queen takes but uh, also with the queen then maybe there's queen takes f3 no just turning attention to the d4 pawn rook d8 we have king c4 yeah a bit of a king chase rook takes d4 this is not good this is a crushing move this is a bone crushing move can you see what would happen if rook takes d4 here white cannot play rook takes d4 if i give you five seconds can you see why starting from now okay i'll just quickly show you if rook takes d4 there's 95 check yeah it seems a lot of Carolina's moves are like making dark square checks available if you look at the pattern in this game uh, when he took on e5 uh, you know he got f6 and there's a number of instances actually in this game of of creating dark square attacking opportunities but this sack just opens up the e5 square beautifully king c5 now we have rook takes d1 knight takes d1 and a horrible dark square check and in fact culminating the dark square tactics of this game can you see the final move here okay white well, doesn't have to take the knight when there's a mate in one available queen d4 checkmate it's a little bit mysterious this game because the first few moves are actually very trendy the f5 was a bit of a novelty and it seemed for a moment double-edged but the opportunities for knight e4 were even it seems as though knight e4 and you might want to check this with your own engine stuff it was actually clinically possible instead of even king h8 if you want to check the variations yourself it shows actually that this f5 might have been actually it's a very important novelty in this variation and it seems to just mean that white has ended up after the opening with a load of weaknesses around his king but the way uh, Carolina was keeping uh, his dark square opportunities you know being creating them all the time it, it it's just a very very um technically interesting game as well from a tactical perspective so i hope you got something from this comments or questions on youtube thanks very much